Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are trying to focus on some of the ecosystem around Godot, some of the cool modules and plugins that are out there, and today we are talking about Godot Steam. I'm betting by that name, you can probably guess what this is all about. First, quick primer, Godot. Godot is an open source game engine. If you've never heard of it before, well, welcome to the channel. I have all kinds of coverage about the Godot engine. 2D, 3D, super small download, awesome little game engine. If you want to check it out, just head on over to GodotEngine.com. Org. Uh, download it. And today what we are talking about specifically is Steamworks. Now, what exactly is a Steamworks? Well, Steam. You've heard of Steam. It's probably the number one place to buy games for PC right now, even though Epic Games Store would like to change that. Um, and I bet you there's more games sold at Steam now than there are even at like EB Games and GameStop and all the rest of that. It is a very important place if you want to sell your games on a PC. But in addition to just being a store, it also provides all kinds of services and tools on the back end, things that your game can integrate. It supports obviously things like payment, uh, multiple languages, multiple stores, real-time sales data, everyone's favorite topic, DRM, uh, broadcasting your game and so on, marketing details, etc. But where we're talking about specifically today is things like this, cloud save. So you can have a save game on one side and use it on a different computer and so on. Um, and then we've got also the gameplay stuff, things like uh, achievements, leaderboards, game servers, notifications, Steam voice or voice talking, DDoS protection. And then you've got other things like input handling, microtransactions, things like DLC and DLC content, and of course, selling things like DLC and DLC content. And given that those are the ways that people are more and more monetizing their games, Steamworks is pretty important. If it is your platform of choice, you're probably going to be, if you're publishing on Steam, going to want to integrate with at least some of the features that Steamworks provides. Now, the problem is, how do you do that? Well, in the world of Godot, you use Godot Steam. So welcome to today's topic. Godot Steam is a module for the Godot engine. Now, that has a couple of ramifications. I'll get back to the very end of this video. I'll do a breakdown, or I'll show you a breakdown I've already done on what a module is versus... Um, and uh, let's see, the building the source code yourself or using GD Native. A module basically means that you're going to have to build this into your local install of Godot. Don't worry, building Godot is a pretty straightforward process. It's well documented. I've done tutorials on how to do it. Also, the nice thing here is you got a bit of a, an instructional guide on how to do this. One of the great things about Godot, Godot Steam is you've actually got instructions on how to do just about everything. But since this is a module, you're basically, you, you clone Godot, you clone Godot Steam, and you put it into a directory, you do a rebuild using something called scons. It's not really that difficult of a process, but you're going to have to walk through it. So all the details are here for setting up and creating your custom version of Godot with Godot Steam built into it. And once you've got that done, well, then you can start using this to add Steamworks support to your Godot project. Now, if you're curious who's using this, well, these guys are using this. And if you make a game using Godot Steam, you should contact them and reach out. Obviously, this isn't necessarily all of the games that were written in Godot on Steam that use it. These are just the ones that they know about. But as you can see, it has definitely been battle tested. There are a decent number of games out there that are using Godot Steam. And if you want to get up and started with Godot Steam, it is quite simple and really well documented. So you can see here, the, the function requirements are really straightforward. You initialize it by calling steam.steaminit, uh, and then if that fails, you shut down. That's kind of it. And, and then you start doing requests. So is subscribed, get the Steam ID, is logged on, etc. And then you can also do a thing like, this is a check to see if the user owns the game or not. And we've got things like, uh, if you want to get into, say, checking for DLC or whatever, we come on over here to the functions. We'll look at all of the functions available. And you're going to get an idea of just how comprehensive Godot Steam is. So here are, you know, the initialization and checks of Steam running and so on functions. But then we get into subscription, Valve anti-cheat being configured, DLC, is DLC out there? Are friends online? What are those friends doing? And so on. And then we get into... All these still all the friends stuff, clans, and so on. We just kind of keep going and going. So we now we're into uh, HTML interfacing. I'm not actually 100% certain what that part is for. Each HTTP requests. Uh, then we've got input handling from Steam input, inventory management. So basically, all of those things that we saw that Steamworks provides, well, we get this nice. Um, 
GD script layer over top of it. So if you want to use Steam for matchmaking, hey, look, matchmaking code is all here. Basically everything that, that you're going to need to use Steamworks for, networking, uh, DLC management, inventory management, workshop integration, all of that stuff for Steam has been handled for you. So basically if you wanted to implement Steam, someone has done a heck of a lot of work for you, which is definitely a very nice thing. And uh, yes, thank you to you guys for doing this. Uh, also the implement signals, uh, so they're doing things in a callback, um, Godot-friendly way. So if you're waiting on something to uh, get back to you or you're writing some callback code, it implements signals. So you you're, you can do this things the Godot way, which is also a very nice way to do things. So in a nutshell, that is Godot Steam. Very comprehensive. It's also very well supported. So if we head on over now, we will see it is an open source project. It is under the MIT license, just like Godot. This is a great license. It gives you um, all kinds of things. Basically, you get no warranty. You can't hold them liable for anything. And you got to keep the license intact. Otherwise, hey, do what you want. I love the MIT license. It's very straightforward. So if this thing melts your computer, hey, that's on you. But otherwise, uh, you can do what you want with it. I, I like MIT for that sake. Uh, there's also implementations for older versions of Godot, Godot 2.x. There's also for server side or headless Godot. And then this part's a little disappointing. There's implementation via GD native. And again, I'm going to cover that in just a minute of what the differences are. But GD native would be a heck of a lot easier. You could basically use it as like a downloadable dynamic plugin. Uh, and the code is out there. There is this project. Unfortunately, we go to check on that. Uh, we're two years old. Uh, we're 158 commits behind the original project. So I don't think I would use the GD native port. It looks like you're stuck with the module version, which does mean you're going to be building Godot from code. But again, it's not really as hard as it sounds. Trust me on that. Don't be scared off by that fact. So what you're gonna wanna do is stick to this version. Hopefully the GD native version does get some love at some point in the future, because GD native would make this a lot easier. It would take out that build process side of things. Um, but as you can see from the warning, this is still in active development. Uh, well, functional, do not suggest using it in production code for testing only. And when they're saying that, uh, that active development doesn't seem to be too, too active. So if you wanna pick this project up and work on it yourself, there is the, the makings of a GD native interface out there, but it doesn't look like uh, this is an active project anymore, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, yeah, that is the case. And if you're interested in kind of understanding the difference between the various different ways you can work with Godot in the C++ programming language, you basically have native, GD native, and then modules. G uh, native development basically would be you entering code directly into the Godot source space and rebuilding it yourself. So you're changing Godot. And then you could contribute your changes back up to the main trunk. But the problem is if you forked it and make your own changes and then they release a new version, you're going to have to merge in all of your changes and so on. And that can get a little annoying. So there's two solutions to this. One is GD native. And that's like a basically kind of like a DLL interface. You can download plugins and then Godot knows how to talk to them. So it can only do as much as that plugin interface allows it to, but you'd be amazed by how much is implemented using GD native, uh, such as GD script and open VR. Those are implemented using GD native. So it, it, you can do quite a bit using GD native and it makes installation and so on a lot easier. And then the final thing we've got is modules and modules are in fact how um, Godot Steam is implemented. These are extensions to Godot itself. You have to rebuild your version of Godot, but the nice thing is since it's a module, it's somewhat decoupled. So that means if there's a new version of Godot brought out, as long as it doesn't change something really fundamental, you should just be able to do a rebuild. So you can keep your, your changes kind of separate from the code of the core of Godot itself, but it does have the downside of having to do a rebuild whenever either part changes. So if Godot is updated, you get a new version of Godot or you change your module, you're going to have to rebuild your version. It's kind of a pain, but again, building Godot is, it's pretty easy once you've got it sorted. You just need uh, Python scons, uh, a build tool such as Visual Studio or Mingw or G++, uh, G GCC. And then from there, you just kind of do as you will. So that's Godot Steam, kind of what we covered today. Basically a comprehensive, Steam API for the Godot game engine. If you want to build a Steam game or you want to integrate Steam technologies into your Godot game, this is a great one to check out. If you like what he's doing, he does have a Patreon account out there. And if you want to really jump into it, where you're going to want to go is right here. Start off at uh, 
this particular repository at gramps.github.io. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below. Uh, definitely a really cool project, and it's kind of one of those things where the, the open source side of Godot really shines. It's nice to see this out there, and again, under the MIT source license. So this makes Godot even more powerful. Now, I could also see it making a bit of an argument for integrating this directly into the Godot game engine as you know, just part of Godot, uh, but I can also see why you'd want to keep a bit of arms length because then if things are updated you don't have that dependency and that's where modules really shine so there's strengths and weaknesses of merging this functionality directly into Godot or not uh, but the fact it's implemented as a module it's again don't be scared about building it. it it might be daunting at first but it's not really that hard in the end and if you got a decently modern computer building Godot takes like 10 or 15 minutes tops so uh, that is Godot Steam and implementation of Steamworks for the Godot game engine hopefully we see an update to the 4.0 release at some point in time given the fact that they're actively at in code even just last month i imagine we will see that uh so that is it good steam let me know what you think comments down below and i will talk to you all later